Hi guys, welcome to Chapter 3, Descriptive Statistics, Numerical Methods. Um, we are going to be looking at uh, 3.1 and 3.2, but first I wanted to say that uh, from now on, rather than doing whole chapters in these videos, I'm going to be doing um, just sections. So I'm going to make the, the videos a lot shorter, um, easier to swallow, that sort of thing. Um, and yeah, so as you can see in Chapter 3, we've got... 3.1 and 3.2 um, in the book they go all the way up to 3.6 we're not going to be covering 3.3 to 3.6 okay we're just going to be looking at central tendency and measures of variation this video in particular going to be describing central tendency okay hope you guys did uh, well on chapters one and two um, but now we're ready to go on chapter three describing central tendency so Parameters and statistics. So we got into this a little bit um, in chapter one, I believe. And um, a population parameter is a number calculated using population measurements that describe some aspect of the population. So you heard the word population a bunch there. So population parameter is just a description of the population in some capacity using all of the information in the population. Okay, so I'll give you an example of that in a second, but I'll, I'll describe sample statistic here. A sample statistic is a number calculated using the sample measurements that describe some aspect of the sample. Um, so take, for instance, if we took down all of the dates of birth of everybody in our 40-person um, class, 40-person uh, online class here, okay, we, and, and we consider our class to be the population. Say, say I want to answer the question, what is the average age of everybody in this class? The process would look something like, I ask you guys, you post in the discussion, uh, you know, like your date of birth or, or just what your age is, okay? We would get all 40 pieces of data, and we would say, okay, great, we have all the ages of the population. We would take them, we would add them all up together, and divide by the number of people in the class to get the average of our population. All right? And so that would be considered a population parameter, and that parameter would actually be the mean or the average. Okay? And we'll get to that here in a second. Uh, but I want to differentiate between a population parameter and a sample statistic. A sample statistic is when you take a sample, okay, of, of that and then you try to make some determination about the population. So you would take a sample statistic. So say the exact same experiment. We wanted to know what the average age of students is um, in our class. But one issue that we have is um, I ask the question and only 15 people respond. Okay, for whatever reason, you know, maybe nobody logged on that day and we had some t sort of time constraint or whatever it was but we have 40 people in the class only 15 responded so a sample statistic is saying hey we're trying to we're trying to figure out some information about the population but we only have a subset of that population so we would actually run a calculation on just the sample and then we would know what the sample mean is and then that can kind of give us an idea of of some characteristic of a population. It's not going to give us the complete picture because we don't have all the information, but it'll give us some idea. So in that in that regard, we would add up all 15 values and divide by 15, and that would give us an average. That would be our sample statistic, and we would say, okay, well, this is an estimate for the population parameter of of average age. So I mentioned uh, mentioned some of this a little bit before. So we have measures of central tendency, um, and this is where does where does the data uh, tend to lie? Okay, and the the three measurements that you've probably most of you have probably heard of, we have mean, median, and mode. Mean for population is denoted by this letter right here, and that's called mu, and that's the average or expected value. Median is denoted by m sub d. And that's the middle point of the data. And the mode, which is the most frequent value, is denoted by M sub O. Okay? So this is, these are the formulas for, uh, for mean. There's population mean and there's sample mean. Population mean we talked a little bit about if we have a class of 40 
and we have all of the information we have we we pull down all of the information on that whole class we have all of the population information we can calculate a population mean if we just have a sample of some population we can calculate a sample mean please don't be alarmed by all of these crazy crazy uh, mathematical terms here uh, we will go ahead and talk through them as if you guys have never seen them before because um, I know some people have more uh, prior knowledge on this stuff than others so we're just going to describe them as if nobody has ever seen them so we just talked about mu this is how this is pronounced mu or m u you know I know that I I make m's with three humps I don't really know why that is but okay so we have mu and this would this whole thing would read as mu is equal to the summation from i equal 1 to n or big n of big x sub i all over n and that equals uh, big x sub 1 plus big x sub 2 plus all the way out to big x sub n all over n okay and this is this looks I think scarier than it is um, all this is saying is hey add up all of the pieces of data that we have in the population and divide it by the number of pieces of data that we have in the population and okay the reason for this I equals one and and the superscript of, of n right here it's just saying we're summing from the first iteration so that's that first term all the way to the nth iteration the nth term so in that example that I gave you guys when we have 40 students in the class the first um, the first uh, the I equal one is just gonna be the first student on the list and then I equal n is gonna be the nth student on the list or the 40th student on the list okay so that's all that is it's basically saying like n, n being the the number of pieces of data that you have in your population that's what you're gonna sum through all of the data or one through n of the data okay so this this all tends to be then each piece of data divided by the number of pieces of data okay and actually the sample mean is the exact same formula except that we denote little n signifying that it's a sample not big n and little x signifying that it's a sample as well but other than that the formula is exactly the same the only thing uh, another thing that you'll see different is we don't use mu we use x bar so we only use mu when we're talking about a population and when we're talking about a sample mean we use x bar and we'll show you how this this works in practice here in a second so the median um, <clears throat> yeah so I'm just gonna describe these terms and then we're gonna go back and do some examples of all of them kind of concurrently the median m sub d is a value such that 50% of all measurements after having been arranged in numerical order lie above or below it. If the number of measurements is odd, the median is the middlemost measurement in the ordering. If the number of measurements is even, the median is the average of the two middlemost uh, uh, measurements in the ordering. So here I'll just give you a quick example of that. Say we have a die. Um, or, a, or a, a, a you know dice and we have one two three four five and six as outcomes because we have an even number here the the median it's not going to be one we, we, we can take those out it's not gonna be one and six because those are far out it's not gonna be five and two this is how I go about it it's, and because it's even, it's going to be the average of these two values right here. So that would be the median for that data set. If, in fact, we had, I don't know, I guess a seven-sided dice, die, as they say. Okay, we get rid of one, get rid of seven, get rid of six, get rid of two, get rid of five, get rid of three, and then we're left with four. And that would be our median because that's an odd number so it's going to be the middlemost number so the middle point of the data and then the mode is just the most frequent value um, 
So if we have, well, uh, we'll see, we'll see mode here in a little bit when we're looking at examples, and then we'll just go ahead and um, we'll go ahead and, and talk through these. Uh, if there are two modes, it's called bimodal. If there are more than two modes, it's called multimodal. Uh, and when the data are in classes, the class with the highest frequency is the modal class. Okay, and we will get to this in the examples. So right now we're going to go to the review sheet. So flip to your review sheet. And we have the car mileage case, which is page 100 in your book. And um, what we're going to do is uh, we're just going to go through this review sheet here. Oh. So we're going to go through A, and it says, calculate the mean, median, mode for the first five pieces of data. So the first five pieces of data in the first column are these pieces right here. <clears throat> and this is a sample. So we're going to go X bar is uh, equal to the summation from I equal 1 to little n of x sub i all over n. And in this case, we know that n is 5 because we have a sample of 5 pieces of data. So this is going to look like x1 plus x2 plus x3 plus x4 plus x5. Uh, terrible. All over n which I guess is 5. So we have 30.8 plus 31.7 plus 30.1 plus 31.6 plus 32.1 all over 5. Do the math there. Uh, we get 156.3 over 5, which is 31.26, and that is equal to, again, x bar. Okay, so the median, I would just go up to the data. If you, what we could do is we could uh, order it. Yeah, let's just do that. So we have, oh, writing, 30.1 would be the first. 30.8 would be the second, 31.6, 31.7, 32 32.1. And so then we would just get rid of the highest, the lowest, the highest, the lowest, giving us a sample median of 31.6. Okay. And then the one thing that we'll note, because the mode needs to be the most frequent value, we actually don't have a most frequent value. They all occur the exact same number of times. So um, we just say that there's no mode. And so then we'll go on to um, calculate, we'll go on to B, calculate the uh, mean, median, and mode for the whole data set. Okay, so I will uh, go ahead and show you guys how to download this data set real quick. Place right here. Okay, so if you are on the McGraw Hill website, we'll go to My Courses. No, well, My Courses. Okay, so your uh, I guess your student view will look something like this, and I would click on the ebook, and then I would go to. Uh, it looks like you'd go to book contents, you'd find chapter three, which we're already there. And <clears throat> we are in 3.1 central tendency. We just go down and we find where we see that data. So that data is right here, and then you can download the Excel file. Okay, so once we have that saved and, uh, and now opened, um, you can see the data set here. So it is just in kind of a random order like they had uh, shown us in the table here and like I had put on the table here. So in order for us to calculate uh, mean, median, and mode, I'll show you guys how to do it using 
Excel um, a couple different ways, and I will show you how to do it um, using Megastat as well. Okay. So first thing I'll do is I want to make this uh, data um, able to be um, sorted. So I know you guys can't see it here in the viewer, but you'd go up to data and then filter. Okay, and then that's what's that's what's it's going to show you. So you could go ahead and say smallest to largest, and it will order your data just like that. Okay, and the function that I I would uh, use if we're going to um, so I guess we'll say mean is right here, median right there, and mode. Okay, so for median, um, the function is equals average of or in an open parenthesis, and then you would just highlight all the data. Gives you 31.56. For median, we would say median of, and then highlight all the data. And mode, mode. I think it's just, I think it's just standard mode. Yep. So that's how you do it in Excel. So average of, and then the area that you're averaging, uh, median of the area that you're averaging, and, or the median of the area that you're covering, and then mode of the area that you're covering. Okay, and if you guys want to use Megastat, Okay, let me show you Megastat. Go up to add-ins. I'm assuming that you've already uh, added in Megastat. If you haven't done that, um, uh, I can, uh, I guess, ask me in the discussions and I can show you how to do that. But we would go to Megastat, descriptive statistics, and this is where you'd input your range. So. The whole range there. I believe that's the whole range. And then make sure that you have mean clicked on. We don't need sample variance or standard deviation. We're not doing that yet. Um, we don't need the minimum and maximum of the range yet, but we do need the median and the mode. So we click that on. We click OK. It's going to put us into uh, an output uh, page. This is not on the same page, but let's check the mean. So the mean that they came up with uh, was 31.56. We look at sheet one, we got 31.56. The output here, median was 31.55. We got 31.55, and our mode is 31.4. They got 31.4. So that's how you do that in Megastat, and that's how you do it in Excel. And then, yeah, we will just, uh, let's go back to our worksheet. So we'll just say that this was completed in Excel. And now we want to calculate the mean, median, and mode with the following populations of numbers. Um, this followed populations of number population of numbers, and this is actually number three point three a on page one hundred six. But um, yeah, the first thing I'll do is I'll order these in such a way that it's easy to easy for us to use. So I'll order them um, six, eight, eight, nine. 10, 10, 10, 11, 12, 12. There should be 10 pieces. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Perfect. So uh, we can add all of these up. If we add all of them up, uh, 
So this is here's the formula. We have mu equals summation from i equal one to n of big X sub i all over big N. We know that n is the total number of pieces of data, so this is going to be 10, and it's going to be 9 plus 8 plus 10 plus 10 plus 12 plus 6 plus 11 plus 10 plus 12 plus 8. And if we do all the math, it's going to be 96 over 10 or 9.6. So that is our mu, because we assume that this is a population. Our median, we're going to say, okay, we get rid of 12, and 6, and 8, and 12, and 11, and 8, and 10, and 9, and then 10 and 10 get averaged, and they just come out to 10. So that's our median. And our mode is just the most frequent one. So if we look here, what's the one that is most frequently represented? Well, that's 10. So our mode is 10. All right, guys, uh, thanks for watching, um, and I guess stay tuned for uh, the video for 3.2. Thanks so much.